want to talk a bit about the basic kinetics and thermodynamics considerations of the SN2 reaction. So let's just write down a general SN2 reaction. Nucleophile, let's call it negatively charged. Reacting with a carbon that bears a leaving group, something that can break away from carbon, taking the pair of electrons with it. And we picture that unshared pair on the nucleophile making a bond with carbon at the same time that the leaving group leaves, taking a pair of electrons with it. So it's going through a transition state where the nucleophile is partially bonded to carbon. The leaving group is only partially bonded to carbon. And whatever it is that's attached to carbon otherwise is in a plane perpendicular to the plane of the screen here. And as this transition state, which has essentially no lifetime, proceeds on to product, we end up with a nucleophile carbon bond that's new, plus a leaving group. And the kinetics of this process are simple to consider. The rate is equal to some rate constant times the concentration of the reactants in the slow step. And there's only one step, so it is the slow step. So we're looking at the concentration of the nucleophile and the concentration of the substrate. And so there's one reactant in the rate equation. There's a second reactant in the rate equation. And so two reactants in rate determining step, which makes this a second order reaction. Now we said that in addition to the concentration of nucleophile and the concentration of substrate affecting the rate of the reaction, we said how good the leaving group affects the rate, how good the nucleophile is affects the rate, the steric requirements of what's attached to carbon affects the rate. Where are they in this equation? Well, in this rate e equation, this rate constant, key component is the activation energy. So let's write the energy diagram for this reaction and fold that into consideration. I've put two energy diagrams here, both of which would be entirely appropriate for the SN2 reaction. You see there's only one hump and there's only one step. We know that the energy diagrams have the same number of humps, which is an activation energy, as the steps of the overall reaction. So this makes sense. The difference between these two is the thermodynamics. Take a look. In one case, the change in free energy is positive, which means the reaction is unfavorable. This is going uphill. In the other case, the change in free energy is negative. It's going downhill, and it's favorable. Both cases can take place. It just means that in the case where delta G is positive, we have got to supply energy. And if we want this reaction to be productive, to make desired products, we'll have to do something to be ensured that this is not an equilibrium reaction. Now let's take a look at the thought regarding the effect of changing the leaving group, the nucleophile, or the substitution on carbon. And how does that fit with our picture of increasing the rates or decreasing the rates? For cases where we have a better leaving group, we have a better nucleophile, or we have fewer alkyl groups attached to this carbon, the rate is faster which is a way of saying this activation energy is lower. And so relative to some standard, when we improve the leaving group of the nucleophile or reduce the alkyl substitution on carbon, we lower the activation energy and improve the rate. On the other hand, for cases where the leaving group is not as good, the nucleophile is not as good, or we have more alkyl substitution on carbon, which increases the steric hindrance and slows down the rate, we have just the opposite effect. In any of those cases, the activation energy is increased. So what we're saying is that as we're talking about a better leaving group or a better nucleophile or more steric hindrance, all we're saying is that the activation energy for this rate determining step, the only step in this reaction, is changed as a result of changes in those parameters. And so the kinetics reflect that in the rate constant term which shows up as an activation energy change when we look at the energy diagram for the reaction. Very straightforward. 
So in summary, we can look at the energy of the reactants and products and compare where they start and where they finish and determine whether this is an endorganic reaction, unfavorable, we have to add energy, or an exergonic reaction, favorable, it releases energy. So the thermodynamics is totally obvious from the energy diagram, and the rate constant component that is changed by changing the reactant parameters of the reactants is simply changing the activation energy, which we can also see readily from looking at the energy diagram of the reaction.